Now let's stand together. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we exalt your holy name and we thank you for who you are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth to die for us, giving your life and making a ransom for us that we could be free, redeeming us back to the Father. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, by our own choice, we choose that we're going to worship you. We're going to serve you. We're going to walk upright before you as we do our worship and our obedience. We're going to declare your greatness and your greatness. We come in singing and worshiping and declaring your greatness until you come. So have your way in this service today. Be exalted and be glorified, and we'll give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's worship yeah, the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 12, 4 says, In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Amen. Yeah. We're here to exalt his name. Amen.
marching in your army, Lord. And we're advancing in the power of your word. We will face the darkness through your light. And we will fight the battle. to the 
of your love for me. And it's written on your hands and feet. Lord, it's all the evidence I'll ever need. Your love is better than life. There's no one that can take your That's place. Right. Yeah. And there's nothing that can separate. Oh, how high, how wide, how deep. The greatest love the world has ever seen. Surely 
Pastor Vance. Thank you, Lord. You know, I always thought about that scripture, and I always had this picture in my mind about God's goodness and mercy following me, pursuing me, Amen. overtaking and accompanying me. But the Holy Spirit said to me right now, he said, there's actually another way to look at that too, Dana. And that is that everywhere you go, because of God's love in us, his goodness and mercy are following us. Yes. We're leaving evidence of his goodness mm. and mercy Amen. everywhere we go. Amen. 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 I love that. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. 
worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you are already doing this, but I feel an encouragement from the Lord. Gather together in your homes. Yes. Pray over any lost ones, any yes. loved ones that you see battling and struggling. Come on. You see the enemy trying to pull them. You yes. raise up with the spirit of Jude, like he said, snatch them. Snatch them from the flames. Snatch them flame. from the flames. Snatch them. The Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Can hey, you Paul. Get? Paul, real Don't quick. Come up. here, buddy. Paul. Don't give up. Hey, Paul. Come here. Come here, bud. Real quick. Amen. We are, we're in a war. We are in the midst of it right now. We are in a war in this earth. And we're standing in the Lord. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Come here, bud. This war has been going on for over 2,000 years. Hello? It's been going on longer than that. I want you to tell them what you shared with me the other day about the, the uh, one who hated God and what his last words were. There was a man named Voltaire. He was responsible for the French Revolution right after our Revolutionary War. He was an ardent atheist. And on his deathbed, it's recorded that he said, What have I done? What have I done? I feel the flames on my feet. Mm. Now that is a quote from his biographer. Take it for what you will. But we believe it because we know the other side of it. Amen. The scripture does declare that we're to pray in the Holy Ghost always. Have compassion on some. Snatching them out of the flames. Was anybody else hanging over the flames of hell other than me? Come on. I knew if I had died that night, I was going to hell. We're in a warfare. We're in a battle for souls. Now, my bride, she had read something or heard something about what true repentance is. In Hebrew. In the Hebrew. In the Hebrew language. It means burn the house down so there's nothing to go back to. And it comes. Burn it down. That's repentance. I know in the New Testament we talk about yes. the about faith. About you faith. Can do this, uh, you can do that. Yes. But in the true Hebrew, it says, burn that old house down completely. So there's, so there's nothing to return to. Pulling you back. It comes out of the book of Genesis. When the angels came, the Lord Jesus came as well. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. And, Mo, and excuse me, Abraham pleaded for his loved ones. Did he not? Well, it ended up that the angels brought judgment after Lot and his family were escaping. And the scripture says, fire and brimstone went down upon Sodom and Gomorrah. To use a phrase that we would use nowadays, he made a glass factory out of it. It was so hot. But Lot's wife after it was destroyed, turned to look back and longed upon Sodom and Gomorrah with her heart, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. That's, right. that's why, that's where it comes from. Repentance is burn the house to the ground yes. so that you have no place to return to. And we are in this kind of a battle, this kind of a fight, in this day and age. So when we're standing in the gap and we're praying for souls to the kingdom, we're believing God that He's going to pull them out of the darkness and the house is going to be burned to the ground and they have no place to return to. Are you hearing me? 
It's urgency. We live in urgent days. Urgent, urgent, urgent days. But God is doing a mighty work and He's stirring His people. He's stirring us like He's never stirred us before. Why? Because there's souls being weighed in the balance and being found wanting. He's saying the days of nominal Christianity are to an end. He said to the church at Ephesus, I wish that you were either hot or you were either cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. God says be hot or cold. Hot or cold. And he's calling the body of Christ to be on fire. To be on fire, burning with the fire and the passion of the living God. Declaring the greatness of the Lord to a world that doesn't want to hear it. But they're looking for answers. But they're looking for answers. And that same love and mercy and grace that God used to bring you and I to the kingdom is that same love, mercy, and grace He'll use for the rest of the world. Lenny? As you know, we've been planning for VBS, and this morning, you know, the Lord reminded me it's for souls. These children, some of them will never hear about Jesus except this time at this VBS, but it's a seed that's sown. Amen. So when I get up here and I talk about, you know, we're looking to have fun, yes, we're going to have fun. We're going to put the word in them Amen. through fun, through games, and, you know, we need things, you know, like we have that list, you know, you see the supplies. That's just to get them here. But our goal is souls because Amen. we want to plant the seeds because these children need Jesus. And it might be the only Jesus, their entire family. They're going to take all those things that we give them back home. And that is is Jesus. You know, we pray over that stuff and we and we pour into them. So, you know, please think about that. VBS is a ministry first. It's for souls. So when I get up here and I talk about fun and games and supplies and all this stuff we need, remember every single seed sown is for yes. souls. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we can come and gather together. Father, I know even in the wee hours of this morning, you were speaking to me. And you and I were having cornonia together. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for revealing yourself in big and powerful ways. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you love us so much. You came to this earth. And we thank you that you came fully God, but you came fully man too. And we thank you that you, your death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, that you went into the depths of the earth and you took the keys to hell, death, and the grave and you control them. And we thank you for redeeming us back to the Father. We thank you that we can cry, Abba, Father, and Lord Jesus, you've said that in the last days that you're going to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the Father. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that's happening. And Lord, we also thank you. We thank you that you've made us joint heirs with you in your inheritance. Now we know that you came to this earth to die for every man, every woman, every child. You came to redeem us. And we thank you for that, Lord. But I thank you right now that gathered around your throne, there are men, women, and children from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, and every kindred. Your word declares this in the book of Revelation. And Lord, they're worshiping you in spirit and they're worshiping you in truth. And Lord, if that's what heaven looks and sounds like, that's what the church here on this earth ought to look and sound like. We've been declaring it, Lord, here in Morganton, North Carolina since 1996, that this church 
it will look and sound like heaven. And Lord Jesus, we call right now to the winds of the four corners of the earth to give up the lost coming to your kingdom. They come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They come with glad and sincere hearts. We throw open wide the doors of our hearts. We throw open wide the doors of celebration. And we say, come, welcome. And Lord, we love one another and we grow in the things of the kingdom together. And we share your love and mercy and grace with a world that does not yet know you. So Lord, we thank you right now. Our nation needs an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Father God, beliefs from all over the world have been seeping into our nation and moving upon our land. But Lord Jesus, we know that you and you alone are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through you. That's what your word has declared, and we believe it. So Lord, we pray for the winds of the four corners to blow, the winds of your spirit to move, and we thank you right now for a fresh outpouring of your spirit to begin in my heart, to begin in the heart of every believer, to move across our land into those that are, do not yet know you. Bring them even in the night hour to your kingdom, Lord. And Father, we're paying our tithes and we're giving our offerings. And everyone names their seed because you have said every seed will produce after its own kind. Some will produce 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But Lord, we right now, every one of us are calling souls to the kingdom. We're declaring as Joshua declared, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So Lord, we declare your greatness. We give it's given good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men and women, pour back into our lives so that we can give again. Lord Jesus, this rock is symbolic off of our land. And we speak to the land over there on Bethel Road. We tell that land, you are fruitful. You produce what God has intended. We thank you. Buildings are built on that land. And they are bought. They are paid for. We are debt free, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. It will be a place where the glory of the Lord is seen and people feel the glory of God and they feel welcomed to the kingdom of God. So Lord, we call souls, souls, souls to your kingdom. We declare bodies be healed, yokes be lifted, burdens be removed. But above all, the name of Jesus Christ, exalted and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You're free to come and give.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's, it's our privilege right now to recognize the newest member of our family here at Celebration. Come on up here. We won't clap. We'll clap with just little air claps so we don't Just a little tiny air clap so you don't wake him up. <laughs> Benjamin is here. So we won't wake him up, huh? Okay. Oh, he's praising God already. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Hey. <laughs> so this is Benjamin. <laughs> so it was 6 8, June 8th, and he was 6 pounds. He's now going on 7 8 pounds. Wow. Yeah. He's well, going he's really beautiful. quickly. And he is just Mr. Mellow all the time. Like he did, nothing's going to bug him. Like, he's sitting here. He got a fart out, and he's good. <laughs> That's Aww. awesome. Oh, we're so excited for y'all. Lord, we just pray yes, blessings right now over Benjamin. And we thank Benjamin. you for their household. And we speak blessings to each one of them, Lord. And we thank you. He's going to grow healthy and strong. Amen. And he's going to lead souls to your kingdom. Lord yeah. Jesus, we thank you. You're his Savior and Lord as he surrenders his life to you. And, Lord, he'll tell others about your greatness. And we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We love y'all. And I don't uh, see her at the moment, but a huge congratulations to Kira. Yes. Among many don't things, see Kira she, got, right she now. won first place yesterday. In her, she's, she's resting. resting. She like, you want, you want to tell tell what she accomplished? Come here. Of awesome horse competition and many awards, but I love that she got first place. Yeah, she had eight classes Three yesterday, times. and it's the first time, but it was a judge. We had a different judge yesterday, and there was no, uh, you know, you didn't get a ribbon just because you are in that place down there. And yeah. so yesterday it was competition. And she excelled. She got three first place, three, uh, two second place, two third, and a fifth, which she, um, all classes, she placed in all of her classes. So we're super proud of her. She is very competitive, as you know. And, yes. uh, but, you yeah, know, we're really hard. proud of her. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Where's Donald and Dana? If y'all come here for a moment. They're getting ready to to start the what nineteenth? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow, but is it the nineteenth? Twenty third. Twenty third, Don Hicks basketball camp. And uh, the church each year we want to pour into the camp and we also want to pray over the camp. Amen. Y'all's blessings. So Amen. right now here's a gift. That, but we're praying over here's a gift for the basketball camp. camp and for the campers to help them. Y'all receive it. We'll pray over it. Father, right now, we lay our hands upon this. Yes. And, Father, this is symbolic of as we pray for each one of these campers. Yes. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your presence, first and foremost, will be there in this Amen. camp. We thank you that you are going to help students in mathematics, sciences, and other areas, Lord. And, Father, there will be all those things. They'll be able to have a good breakfast, good lunch, Lord, but, Father, we thank you that above everything, Jesus is going to be lifted Amen. up and exalted Amen. and glorified. We ask that you give Don, Dana, and all those that are a part. We thank you, Deidre and Sarai and Cynthia, all of them. You're giving them your strength as well. And, Father God, we thank you that this will be the best camp ever. Yes. And we call souls to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. I know y'all have a special now, so. Amen. This is a song that Donya brought to us. We've shared it. But every time that we do it, the words are just so impactful. There's nothing in this world that's going to satisfy the empty place in your life. Just Jesus, 
Jesus. And when we spend our life trying to fill that place that is created only for him. I mean, it doesn't matter what you try to pick in, pack in there. It ain't going to work because it's created for him. Amen. You're going to come up empty. And the Lord does not want anybody to live an empty life. Amen. Amen. And it's called hunger.
Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands? Say, I need you, Lord. I need you for right now. I need you for this next week. I need you for every area of my life. I need you, Lord. Amen. 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 I want to share a couple of things that the Lord just really has been speaking to me about for quite a while, but everybody in this room and in a modern language that we have, everybody in this room, everybody on this earth has what is real to them. It's become known as, well, this is my truth, my truth, okay? Um, I know when I got saved, before I got saved, I was an alcoholic and a cocaine addict in 1984. And I was looking for happiness. I was looking for all these things. And it was true that that's where I was at. But thank God that some people were sharing not a truth. They were sharing the truth. A good friend of mine that I used to play softball with years ago, and y'all have heard me mention him before, he was also my personal physi physician. And every time I'd go in to see Lee, he would say, Rocky, he said, you have to realize we're practicing medicine. We're practicing. And he said, we, we know basic things that basic medications that will help cure this, and cure this, and cure this, and how you can treat this. And we've learned things over the years, but said we're practicing medicine. <coughs> the Word of God is the truth. You may say, well, I, I don't believe the Word of God. I can tell you 40 years ago, I didn't believe the Word of God. I knew I knew a God that we prayed over for milk and cookies when I went to church. I, I knew a God that, you know, we prayed a blessing every night at supper. But I didn't know a God that cared about me. I didn't know that God. And I want to share a few things with you because the time that we're living in People are desperate. Well, I didn't realize this was so special for today. People are desperate. They're, they're desperate. They're trying to find an answer. They're trying to find, but here's the problem. It, it isn't a quick fix. It's a change that comes to your life. It isn't something that if you do A, B, C, and D, it'll all be better. It's something that you come to a realization and you say, Lord, I need you. And you're drawn by His Spirit to that place because no one comes to the Father except the Spirit of God draws you, pulls you, and brings you toward Jesus. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're all, they're all the same. They're three in one. But three aspects of God. And I want you to look at something because God, the old covenant, we can never do away with the old covenant because Jesus came to fulfill the old covenant. So all the promises, all the things that the Lord was looking for in the old covenant that it was impossible for us to do. That's why we needed a Savior. And Jesus came and fulfilled it. But in the Old Covenant, I want to give you a couple of scriptures there. I want you to look, uh, look at this. Psalm 85. And in this Psalm 85, It's speaking of the coming of the Lord, but they don't realize exactly what they're saying, but they're speaking it to God, these specific sons. 
And in verse number six, it says, will you not, will you not a- revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen with expectancy to what God the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, those who are in the right standing with him. But let them not turn away to self-confident folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who reverently worship and worship him with fear. And it says, and is ready to be appropriated that the manifest presence of God, his glory, may tabernacle and abide with us in the land. Mercy and loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. That word truth there, that word truth in the ancient Hebrew means stability, a certainty, an establishment, a faithfulness. God is speaking to his people, and he's saying, I am stable. You will find stability in me. He's speaking to them and saying, you can be certain concerning me. Certain. You can establish what you do upon what I have declared. Wow. But he also says, I'm faithful. I'm faithful to you. I'll be faithful. In Psalm 86 and 11, I want you to look at this, and then I'm going to share a couple of things with you. It says here in verse number 11, it says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely reverently to fear and honor your name. In Psalm 86, it means exactly the same thing that it was speaking here in Psalm 85. But in Psalm 119, in verse number 30, it's speaking of truth again. We have to remember, God doesn't change. He's always the same. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he will be the same tomorrow. But in Psalm 119, in verse 30, it says, I've chosen the way of truth. I've chosen the way of truth and faithfulness. Your ordinances I have set before me. And I cleave to your testimonies, O Lord, Put me not to any shame. The Lord, the testimonies of who he is, the testimonies of what God has done, the testimonies, I had heard that God delivered, but I had never seen anyone that had been delivered. I knew that God did things because I had Heard others say, well, the Lord healed my body. The Lord did this for me. The Lord gave me peace. But as a, someone who was a cocaine addict, and God comes into your heart, and immediately you're set free from the addiction that I had. And you're set free from the alcoholism that I had. His testimony is true. He says, The psalmist said, I set myself in your truth. I set myself in your truth. We have to grab a hold of God's word. Everybody on the face of this earth is going to believe something. You're going to believe something. You're going to follow something. Everybody. As as we're out and about and we're in the community or even if we're out of town and we're speaking to people, everybody is following something and someone. Well, my friend said this, and that's the way I believe. Well, they just told you that their friend, what they shared is what they're choosing to follow. But I want you to listen to this because when Jesus came to this earth, In the book of John, the the 8th chapter, the book of John in the 8th chapter, and in verse number 31, 
Jesus is ministering and he's already spoken to his disciples, but he's addressed those who have been gathered because everywhere Jesus went, a crowd came. Everywhere Jesus went, miracles took place. And Jesus was declaring and showing his righteousness to people. And he makes this statement. He says, I am the light of the world. The world right now is in the greatest darkness that it's ever been in, other than before Jesus came with salvation. And the world was dark. And Jesus comes and he brings light into the world. My eyes were open. I was blind. I, I, I was so addicted to drugs and alcohol. I was so addicted to it that my day began with it and my night ended with it. It was like walking through life, shuffling my feet with blinders on. And it took nearly dying from a cocaine overdose. And all of a sudden, all the things that had been shared by people, the Holy Spirit speaking to my heart, and I cried out and I said, Lord, if you'll get my, my heart was beating out of my chest. And I said, Lord, if you'll get me through this night, I'll give my life to you. What did I just say? I chose that I was going to believe his truth. And all of a sudden, my heart just slowed down. It stopped beating out of my chest. I'd been doing cocaine all day. And the Lord was freeing me. His truth was being revealed to me. The light of who he is. My eyes were finally open and I could see his light. But look at this in verse number 31. So Jesus was saying to the Jewish people who had believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you're truly my disciples. And you will know the truth regarding salvation. And the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been enslaved to anyone. But do you mean by what do you mean by saying you will be set free? And Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly do declare to you, everyone who practices sin habitually is a slave to sin. I was a slave to my sin. My sin was trying to self-medicate myself, take care of myself, when really I needed Jesus to take care of it. I was trying to medicate the pain, medicate the hurt of my father's death, medicate all these things, and Jesus is there saying, I'm standing at your door, Rocky, and I'm knocking. I'm knocking, and if you'll open the door, I'll come in. I'll come in and I'll be with you and I promise you, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'll be there with you in your time of need. I'll be there with you when you were having an issue with your heart and went into the, the hospital and they go to do a heart cath and they rip your main artery going into your heart and I'm bleeding to death on a cath table. But a minister had called the day before and said, I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord says you'll live and you'll not die to declare the praises of God. That's a truth of God's Word. And as soon as that took place, the little guy that was at my head, he looked at me and the, the doctor said, how is he? And I looked at him and I said, I'll live and not die to declare the praises of God. The main artery going into your heart. And they had time to put three stents in it. How do you go from bleeding to death to them having enough time to start putting stents up your leg all the way into your main artery? Only God. He says, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. That day in... Fry Hospital, 
Jesus set me free from that scheme of the enemy. But on February 26, 1984, at 323 in the afternoon, Jesus set me free from the sin that I was enslaved to. We're living in a world, and the world's looking for answers, and you and I have the light of the world living inside of us, the Spirit of the living God. And he said, let your light so shine before men that it will glorify God the Father on the day he visits you. Let me give you a little bit more here. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and it's going to set you free. John 14 and 6. Jesus said it. He showed himself. He showed up in the upper room after his crucifixion, after his burial, after his resurrection. He rose from the dead. And on the same day he rose from the dead, Jesus revealed himself to his disciples. And there was one called Thomas. And Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until until I can see your hands, until I can see your feet. You don't need to shine the camera all the way over here. You've been here before, Ben. Did I have heart surgery? You were able to see my scar. Thomas said, if I can see the scars, if I can see where they hammered the nails, if I can see how they crucified you, I believe it. And Jesus looked at him, and he said, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God. I'm the real truth and the real life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. What a word from Almighty God. We, we as believers, we have truth living in us. Speaking the word of God is truth. Speaking the Word of God to a situation. The doctors may say one thing. Brenda, I remember when the night we called you and they came and got you. And the doctors started speaking certain things. But Brenda V, Pastor Vanji, and Pastor Rocky, we were already speaking the truth speaking the truth, and sitting in front of us is the one that they said, you're not going to make it. And here you are, cancer-free. Here you are, because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We have to speak life. We have to speak the Word. In our mouths are blessings. Take, Take your forefinger, touch your mouth. In this mouth, You have the ability to bless and to curse. And to curse. There's life and death in this thing. They may give a truth, but we speak the truth. Hello? Well, I've tried Jesus. You know what? I've never been able to figure out how do you try him. How do you try Jesus? Yesterday, for the first time, I tried a product here. I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good product. But I doubt if I'm going to drink it the rest of my life. But it's good. How, How do you go, Jesus, you're good. You're good, but I, nah. I tell you what, if I need y'all come. I did that for years. If I need y'all call. Jesus said, come to me, everyone that are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's a world out here that's literally wore out. They're tired. They've been trying to do it on their own. They're people bound by drugs. They're people bound by alcohol. They're people bound by pornography. They're people that have said, if I can buy one more thing, it'll satisfy that desire for something. And for a moment, it will. 
Oh, every one of us in this room have had that where we've been there and we go, I can remember as a teenager, there actually used to be things called albums. Okay? And I can remember saving my money. Man, I can remember walking the roads and turning in Pepsi bottles, Coke bottles, so I could get a nickel, I could get 10 cents, and saving my money so I could go out and I could buy that album or buy that 45 as a kid. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And the moment you would buy it, it's satisfied for a moment, and then all of a sudden you had to have something else because it did not totally satisfy. I can tell you for a fact, I've been serving the Lord for 40 years now. 40 years I've been free from cocaine. 40 years I've been free from alcohol. 40 years I've been free from the sins that so easily beset me. And I wouldn't go back. Why? Because I burned a house to the ground And there was no place to go back to. There was no place to go back to. The Scripture says, you know, what person would give up father, mother, sister, brother, husband, wife, da-da-da-da-da, and everybody looks at that and they go, what? Look at the culture. In the Jewish culture, to leave Judaism... And go to, and become a Christian, it meant you were dead to your family. And Jesus said, But if you do this for my sake, I'll multiply and I'll give you more fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers. I'll do it all in this life. That's our Jesus. He's an amazing God. You may be sitting here today, you may be watching online with us today. You may be saying, Pastor, I I know, I know a little bit about what you're talking about. Or I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to this earth over 2,000 years ago. And He walked this earth fully God, but fully human. And he lived on this earth for 33 years. And in the last three years of his life, his earthly ministry had begun. And he started ministering and talking to the people of Israel and sharing the love of God with them, telling them how great God is and that he had a plan for their lives. They took him. The religious hated him. And they found a way someone would betray him. And they found a way to capture him. But it was all part of God's plan. They took Jesus. The religious found him guilty. And they sentenced him to death on a cross. Jesus went to a place called Calvary where people were crucified. The most brutal death of the time. They nailed him through his wrists. They nailed him through his ankles to this cross. And he hung on that cross and he endured the punishment even after they had beaten him across his back 40 times, 39 plus 1. Nobody killed Jesus. Jesus looked to heaven. And he said two things. First of all, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He also asked the Father to forgive them. He said, they don't know what they're doing. And with that, he hung his head and he died. He gave his life. A centurion soldier came with a spear and he was verifying Jesus' death stuck him under his ribs, penetrated into his heart, pulled the spear out, and blood and water flowed from his side to prove he had died. They took him and buried him in the tomb because it was 
getting ready to be Passover at 6 that evening. They buried him in the tomb, and three days later, the prophecy that he would rise from the dead on the third day, it came true. But Jesus did. He went into the depths of the earth during that time, and he took the keys to hell, death, and the grave. And he said that if we'll believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we'll confess with our mouths, we believe that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be born again. You say, how can anything be that simple? Our God makes things where even a child can come to salvation. I was 26. My bride was a little girl when she got saved. But he loves you. He has you watching today. He has you in this room today to hear how much he loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus loves you. He'll never turn his back on you. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. He loves you. But he says, I want you to come and surrender your life to me. Now, right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask you a simple question. You've heard the truth today. You've heard the truth of the gospel. You've heard the truth of how much God loves us. See, he doesn't love me any more than he loves you. I ask you a very simple question. If your life ended at this very moment, would you spend eternity in heaven or would you spend eternity in hell? That's something only you and God know. The same for those watching. Would you spend eternity in heaven or would you be in hell? If you're not assured of where you would spend your eternity, I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray right now and your life be changed forever. I want you to pray with me if that's you and say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. I know you died for my sins. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart. Make me a new creature. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you give me, in the power of your resurrection, a brand new life. So, Lord, from this day forward, I choose I'm going to live for you and I'm going to walk with you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. All right, you can look up now. Jesus loves us. He cares about us. I believe with all my heart there are people, whether it's right now on the Internet, right now in this house, they're people that are coming to the kingdom. They may be watching this weeks from now. But the key is, is that Jesus wants everyone to have a witness of who he is. And that's why he's put us here as his children on this planet, so that we can share his love and his mercy and grace with others. For those who may have asked Jesus to come into your heart, first of all, I would never do anything to embarrass anyone. That's not the way the Holy Spirit operates. But you must tell someone that you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and your life and you've given your life to him. The second thing that you need to do, you need to get plugged in with other people that love Jesus and he's the savior of their lives. If you do not have a Bible, Contact us. Contact us on Messenger. We'll get you a Bible. If you're local and you don't have a Bible, let us know, and we'll get a Bible to you. But we also welcome you if you have, do not have a place to call home as a church. We welcome you to come and be with us. On Wednesday nights, we meet at 630 here at New Dimensions until we get our building built. Hallelujah. And then on Sunday mornings, we meet at 1020 
right here also. So we welcome you. Give them a warm hand. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to do something today. We're going to take communion as well. If there's anyone that has not gotten a communion um, cup and wafer, if you'll just raise your hand if you'd like to partake of communion and they'll get it to you. Hallelujah. You may say, what is communion? Communion is the celebration of what Jesus did at Calvary for us. He gave his body. The bread is symbolic of Jesus' body that was broken for us. The cup is symbolic of the blood that he shed for us. On the night that he was betrayed, it was Passover time. They were having a Passover meal. And on the night that he was betrayed, the Apostle Paul, he spoke concerning that night. And he said, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. So Lord Jesus, right now, we thank you for your broken body. We thank you for taking upon yourself the punishment that we deserved. And we thank you that by your stripes that we are healed. So, Lord, as we partake of this bread, we do it in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And in the same manner, Jesus lifted up the cup. And he said, this cup, it's a new covenant. It's in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that nothing can wash away our sins except the blood of Jesus. And we thank you that that same blood, 2,000 plus years ago, has never lost its power. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Every sickness, every disease is healed by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and by your stripes. So, Lord, as we partake of this cup, we do it in remembrance of you, giving thanks to you always in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the power of your cross and the power of your resurrection. We thank you for victory, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you give souls to your kingdom. Place people in our paths that we can share your love with, Lord. And speak truth to them, the truth of what God's Word. And give them hope because you've told us by your Word that you know the plans that you have for us. They're plans of good and not of evil. Plans to give us hope and to give us a future. We thank you for that, Lord. Hallelujah. As, he, as we do each service, I want to read Psalm 91 as we do daily. Declare this over you. He that dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. For He'll save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings you'll find refuge. And his faithfulness is a shield and a wall. And you'll not be afraid of the terror of night, 
nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction, the sudden death that lays waste at noon. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but danger is not going to come near you. You'll only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. Because you've made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he'll command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all of your ways of obedience and service. They'll lift you up in their hands so that you don't even strike your foot against a stone. You'll tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent you'll trample under your foot. Because they have set their love on me, therefore I will save them, and I'll set them securely on high because they know my name, and they confidently trust and rely on me, knowing I'm never going to abandon them. No, never. They call unto me, and I'll answer them, and I'll be with them in trouble, and I'll rescue them and honor them. And with a long life, I'll satisfy them, and I'll let them see my salvation, declares the Lord of hosts. Amen and amen. As God blesses his word. Stand with me. I want to pronounce blessings over you. Blessings were given with an outstretched hand. Blessings were received with a right outstretched hand. The Lord told Moses to tell Aaron to pronounce blessings over his people. I pray the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, and he'll give you peace both now and forever. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. Everything you put your hands to is blessed. Your barns are blessed. Your fields are blessed. Your kneading boards are blessed. You're blessed when you rise up. You're blessed when you lie down. You're the head. You're not the tail. You're on top. You're not on the bottom. You're the redeemed of the Lord. And the redeemed of the Lord shouted, Amen and amen. I encourage you as you go this week, speak the truth of God's Word to people. Let them know the love and the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We pray that you have an awesome week. If you can, come and be with us on Wednesday at 630 or on a Sunday at 1020. God bless. We love you.